Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another World Eaters tutorial. So last Saturday I released my video on Angron and that video is doing very, very well. Obviously there's a lot of people excited about World Eaters. So I'm going to continue on that trend and try and do all the World Eaters videos for you this week before their official launch this Saturday. So today I'm going to be working on the standard troops, the beautiful new corn berserkers that were very kindly sent to me by Games Workshop. So a huge thank you to them for sending out the entire new World Eaters range for me to review and do tutorials for you guys. Before we get into the video, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. So as always, thank you so much. If you guys are interested in becoming a Patreon member, there is a bunch of extra benefits to doing that, such as a private Discord server where you can get involved with me and over 140 other people um, on a daily basis and talk about your hobby, my hobby, everybody's hobby, just get involved. There is also an extra exclusive video every week for patrons. So that's an extra 52 videos a year for them. So there has never been a better time to get involved. So without further ado, let's get painting a berserker. Okay, I've been waiting a long time for new plastic berserkers and here they are. So I got a particularly nicely posed one belt, sprayed black, and then I gave him a coat of grey sear with a rattle can to get him ready for contrast. I used Flesh Tear's red contrast to lay down the first base coat of all of the red armour and all of the gold bits to be honest because red is a fantastic base kit coat for gold. Personally, I feel like the box art version they did of the Corn Berserkers is actually a little too bright. I don't think it's correct and it drives me kind of insane. I think they look kind of like Blood Angels on the box and I definitely want to uh, differentiate them from Blood Angels and make them look a little bit different. So I'm going to start from this much darker place. We are going to go much brighter but not to the same level as the other one. Black Templar contrast was then used for all of the... Um, kind of leather straps and belts and stuff like that to go around his waist all the soft seals on the armor the casings on the bolt the plasma pistol and the head of the chain axe holsters all the chains actually got done with thing because it's uh, black is a better base coat for silver than the white is so basically we did everything except the the bits that were going to be either glowing or skulls or uh any other bits that might be silver so since there's actually quite a lot of black parts in this miniature, so it's yeah, good to take your time, find them all, and pick them out. After that, we're going to move over to the gold. After that, we're going to use Retributor Armor. This is a very bright roll, but we need to knock it right back with a uh, shade and pull it much more into the kind of ready brassy tone, which is what we like to see on our world leaders. So we're going to go around and paint all the trim and other bits and pieces on these miniatures that are supposed to be brass or gold we've all painted chaos space marines before or we've all seen chaos space marines before and we know how much trim is on each and every one of them which can sometimes be a nightmare i don't i didn't actually feel like there was as much gold trim on this guy as a basic chaos space marine maybe i'm wrong maybe i was just enjoying the process but it doesn't look as much maybe it is maybe i'm just going crazy but uh, i really like the results so yeah i was happy <laughs> after that we're going to jump over to lead belcher and base coat in all the other metallics so we're going to go in on those chains there's actually quite a lot of chains hanging off of the world leaders models they hold trophies and skulls and stuff in place the chain axe itself has a bunch of uh, silver detail um midway up the half the uh spiky axe bit on the back and then the teeth of the chains uh, axe as well are all going to get a bit of a silver treatment There's also a couple of grenade pouches or grenades on his belt that we're going to get a coat of silver as well. Just take your time, try not to hit any of the gold, black or red um, on the model as you do this. After that, we're going to jump up to skeleton horde contrast. And we're just going to use this to put the base coat down for any bones uh, that are on the miniature. So world leaders as an army are going to have a lot of skull trophies. So each model is going to have more or less um skulls and bones and stuff so this is still a good thing to learn even though there's only two skulls on this guy and one of them is on the base other ones have big trophy racks with kind of 15 skulls on them so it's a good bit to know after all those are done that is all the base coats applied and it's time to move over the shade and i'm going for berserker blood shade across the entire model it switches the tone of the gold to a brass which is exactly what we want and then everything else gets a really nice red tinge 
which really gives you the world eaters feel. Don't worry, we will be layering up all these bits and pieces uh, after the shade is dried, but this will pull all the colors kind of closer together, make them all match. It's just a really nice color. And there it is with it all dried. I've also based the miniature while I was waiting for the shade to dry, giving us a much neater point to finish the model from. And I love it. So from here, I'm gonna work up that red. And like I said, I don't want the one the, the version of red that they have. So if you really like the box art, maybe this isn't the tutorial for you. I feel the box art is a little bit too bright. Uh, I want it to be a bit more like the world leaders of old. So I'm gonna start with corn red and I'm gonna layer up the armor panel first leaving that uh, Berserker blood shade um, contrast coat in all the recesses and all the crevices anywhere there would be shadow and then taking my time with the corn red and going around all the other areas. This isn't actually a slow process even though if you're looking at it here it seems like one. It's a lot faster than say putting the gold trim on or anything because red paints so well. After that, we're going to jump over some fist on red. I basically do the same thing again, but just going in a little bit. So we're not giving as much coverage as the corn red. And we're only doing it on the most kind of highest points. So if there's any bits that are, are completely in shadow between his legs or armpits or backs of backpacks and stuff, we don't need to, to uh, give them the extra highlight. It's just the bits that are going to be um, kind of forward facing or having the most uh, light hit them. But with that, that's going to be the end of the armor. That's the, the red color that I'm finishing off on. Like I said, it's still nice, bright and vibrant. I think it still gives that world leaders feel, but it's not quite blood angels. It hasn't gone up to like evil sun, scarlet or any orange colors for highlights, which I think keeps us in the realm of safe for not just looking like spiky blood angels. With all of the red finished up, it's time to move over to uh, silver and layer up all the silver and gold parts. So we're gonna go back to lead belcher. But all you gotta do is the normal dot highlight style technique that I use on most of my miniatures when I'm highlighting gold, which is just a few light dots of silver on the gold in kind of corner parts. And it really does highlight it really nicely, really fast. Um, it's a technique I accidentally stumbled across when I was painting my Black Templars when they were first re-released and I have been doing it ever since. It's super quick and effective. Rather than trying to find like a lighter gold or anything to highlight with, this just really hits the back. After that, we're gonna move over to Corvus Black and ha layer up all of the black parts. So all of the cloth, his belt, the kind of hand grip of his ax, the head of his ax, and the casing of his plasma pistol. Things like the soft seal of the armor, you can just leave them the black they were already that was shaded down. That is perfectly fine. I think it leaves a really nice effect. And layering up isn't really gonna add anything to the miniature. It's just gonna waste more of your time. It's only really going to be key details people are going to notice that you're going to highlight up. So you can see the axe is nice and neat now. Pistol, it's all ready to go. The Shafty Bone was used to highlight all of the bone. So like I said, there's only two skulls in this particular guy. If you've watched the Angron video that I just put up on Saturday, uh, you'll know that there's quite a, a few extra skulls on his base as opposed to a basic Berserker. After that, I gave all the glowy parts of the miniature, so his eye lenses and the uh, plasma effect on the gun, a coat of pure white, whatever pure white you want, and then I want Corandrus green contrast and painted that over all of the parts. And that was literally the last step that I will do on this miniature. I will now call him complete and move on to painting the other nine members of his squad. Now that I have the scheme locked in, I'm super happy with it. This is my first new Corn Berserker. And I cannot wait to get my hands on some more when the general release drops on Saturday. I hope you guys like the result that I achieved here. Okay, guys, and there we have it. One corn berserker ready to stomp his way across the tabletop. I absolutely love the new sculpts. I quite enjoy painting them. And I know as soon as the combat patrol drops, I'll be making this a full-fledged army. Thank you guys for sticking around at the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. It costs you nothing. It means everything to me. And if you have any questions about anything I did, put it in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys.
I'll see you guys in the next video.